Hey guys, it's Jim. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for coming back, and I appreciate it. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please do so. I got a lot of things coming around a uh, uh, Luminar. I can't even talk. Um, that'd be kind of a cool name, actually, a Luminar. Anyway, Luminar and Aurora both. I'm going to keep doing my quick tip videos for Luminar. I've got today's workflow video, which is mostly Luminar, and I've got a workflow video for Aurora HDR coming as well. So, thanks for watching and coming back. Let's go ahead and jump into today's topic, and that is this photo. Okay, so this is my end result. That's what I started with. That was a three exposure bracket that I shot in London, and I just wanted to make something kind of creative and different. So I took the three exposures, I blended them in Aurora HDR, and then that was about it. I might have made a couple of minor adjustments, but nothing of any consequence really. So that's my base HDR. I brought it into Luminar specifically because I wanted to do a lot of things that I can't really do in Aurora. I use Aurora a lot, but it doesn't have as many filters, right? So here I am in Illuminar. Again, that's my final result. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and close this and uh, let's go ahead and get started. So here's my base photo. Now I need to go get these filters. So let me do that real quick and uh, we'll keep going. Okay, so I've got my filters. I should have done that before, but hey, I edited that out so you didn't have to wait on me. Okay, so uh, my intent with this photo was just to take um, kind of a boring photo to be honest. I mean, I love the phone boost. They're really cool looking, but it's kind of boring and make something just completely different. I shared it on um, my Instagram and uh, Facebook and places. And a lot of people are like, hey, that's cool. That's fun. That's different. So I thought I'd make a good video. So I'm gonna go ahead and bump up uh, AI to get started. I'm going to add some structure and I got to look at my notes here. So I'm kind of peeling my eyes off to the side here. I wanted to bring up, um, you know, I'm just creating sort of a I don't know what you call it, just something different. And so I went with a, a number of different filters here. Uh, I need some contrast because it's really uh, just too bright. And I'm going to lift a uh, smart tone, uh, add a little bit of that. And this is where I start getting into things because at this point, uh, it's really yellow. And I'm, I'm not a big fan of the color yellow, to be honest. I mean, if it's a sunset, great. Um, but city shots, if you saw my uh, quick tip about uh, managing uh, light pollution in cities, I just don't really like that color. So it goes. Um, okay, so this is where I got into cross-processing, and I'm going to use Miami, and I'm going to bump that up to mid-40s. So something like that. Now I'm starting to get a little bit better. I like the bluer tones, and to me, the bluer look, uh, to me, plays well off the red. I just like it. Again, personal preference. Um, I've got the photo filter. Now, what I'm going to do here, i got to look at my notes and, and keep going back and forth. Um, I went to about 32, but I don't want it in that hue. I want it more in the kind of blue realm because that's what I'm trying to bring that color to it. And if you haven't used a photo filter, um, filter, uh, then check it out. It's a really cool way to sort of mess around with colors and uh, something I like to use. So that is that. And then I'm into HSL. Now I'm kind of moving here because it's uh, I did a lot and you probably don't want to hear all about it, but I want to show you the steps. Uh, so in HSL, I'm starting, to me the primary colors I need to work on here is kind of the reddish pink of the phone booth and I want to accentuate that. And so I'm going to bump up the hue of the red a little bit and I'm going to bump up the hue of the magenta all the way, right? Uh, and then I came over to saturation and I did a similar thing, not quite as much, a little bit more on the saturation maybe something like that, and a bit more uh, for the magenta. I think something about like that, yep. Um, and then I came to luminance, and this is where I wanted the color to, uh, to pop more, to be brighter, and so that's a great thing about this slider. You can just come over here to luminance and just crank up uh, basically the exposure value of that color, and there you go. So I think that's a little bit brighter. I think it looks a little bit better. Let me show you the before and the after. To me, now the red's a bit more visible and prominent in the photo. Before, it was all kind of blue and faded. I'm trying to create more of that color contrast, and so that's kind of where I'm using HSL to help me get that done. Um, now I'm at the point where I do the, uh, I use the filter that everybody, uh, you either love it or you hate it, uh, and it's sun rays. And so um, I love it. Uh, it's been used a lot. It's gonna keep getting used a lot because it's kind of fun and different. Hey, you know, whether you like it or not, you know, I don't care. That's fine. Um, it doesn't matter to me. Um, I like it uh, when used appropriately. So I'm going to move this over about to where I want it. And here we go. I think I was about there. Yep. So basically, 
I'm making the look like the light is really shining. But of course, I don't like the light shining at the top, so I'm gonna erase that here in a minute. First, let me bump up the amount. I'm gonna go to 60 something. So let's call it about 65 or six. Um, the look, I'm gonna take down a little bit. The number, I'm going up a little bit. I think I went about there. Uh, the length, okay, I dropped the length a little bit. I don't want it to, that's the thing to me with the Sunrays filter, it can really dominate a photo, um, especially if it's used like, uh, you know, in, um, you know, like with the high length uh, and high number, it can really, um, obviously it's gonna get the attention of the viewer anyway, but I'm, I'm trying to not overdoing it too much. And then I took the warmth to zero because I don't really have a lot of yellow or warmth left in the photo. And frankly, I don't really want it there. So that goes. Over here with the radius, I took that down a little bit. The glow radius, I went all the way to 100. I do want it to be glowing, like it's something coming alive. I don't know if you remember uh, the movie Terminator years ago where Arnold Schwarzenegger comes down lightning bolt and then boom, he's there. Something like that, like something's happening, getting created or born in the phone booth. I don't know, forget it, I'm kind of dumb. Um, I'm gonna take the glow amount down a little bit and then the warmth I'm taking down quite a bit as well. So again, I'm not creating warm tones, I want the cool tones with that pop of red. Uh, and the last thing here, penetration, I went up a little bit just to create a little bit more fun with it. And randomize, I went to about 33. And there we go. Um, for me, the only thing left is to brush it in, or actually in this case, I'm gonna brush it out. I don't want that anywhere in the top of the photo. I just want it coming out um, and aiming for the bottom of the photo. So I'm gonna check my mask. Um, I doubt that there's anything left, but I'm just gonna clean it up just in case. So that's one of the beauties is um, of Luminar. To me is that you can just mask in a filter, specifically that filter. Um, without adding a new layer. So there we go. I'm really done with that layer. And so I got to this point and I thought that's really cool, but it's not really moody enough. It's not really dark enough. I like the look, but I'm not quite done. And so this is where I added a new layer. It's an adjustment layer. And I got a couple of filters. I got tone. So let me grab that. I've got a vignette. Oops, vignettes up here. I've got color temperature. That's always a good one in my book. And I've got HSL again, because I'm never really done with colors. I just like them. Um, so tone, here we go. I'm gonna bump up the exposure slightly. So something about like that and add some contrast, pretty significant amount of contrast, because I'm, you know, I'm creating that bright center with the darker edges and, and I'm kind of getting there with the contrast, as you can see. Uh, smart tone is coming down a little bit, maybe about like that. And highlights are down. Uh, you know, I don't want it to be totally dominant, and whites are down. Um, so something about like maybe that. Let me show you the before and the after. So I think we made a nice impact um, with those tone adjustments. Vignette, I'm gonna go negative here, pretty good ways. And uh, the inner light, I'm gonna bump up uh, just a little bit because I don't wanna lose some of that oomph uh, from the center of the frame. There's the before. Here's the after. Basically darken the edges, brighten the center. Uh, color temp, I'm just cooling it off a little bit. So I'm going negative 20 some odd. So let's say something like that. I like the blue and the red and that interplay of color. And, and the last thing is I'm looking at it and it's a little bit too blue. So I'm taking the saturation of the blue down. Let's see, about 30-ish, something like that. And the luminance of the blue, just to darken that blue a little bit, something like that. And there's my final photo. Let me show you what HSL did. It was a little too saturated in the blues and a little too bright. I took that saturation down to make it look more of gray because I kind of expect those walls to be gray. Uh, especially to me, this is like a late at night, three in the morning kind of thing happening and some alien thing is getting born in a phone. I don't know what it is. Anyway, uh, let me show you the before and after. There's the before, three exposure bracket, minor adjustments in Aurora, so minor. I don't even remember what they were. But that's it, I probably used HDR uh, Enhance a little bit, it's a great slider. Anyway, and then over here to Luminar with uh, a base layer with a bunch of filters and then another layer with a little bit more. And usually what happens, let me show you the first layer. That's the complete version of the first layer. And I thought I was done, so I saved it, I left and sort of thought about it. But when I came back, I thought, you know, the you can see the sun rays, but they're not prominent enough. I don't wanna totally make that uh, the thing. 
in the photo, but at the same time, I want it to be a bit more prominent, so I wanted to come back. And so for me, if I like where I am, I could have added the filters that I put on layer one. I could have added those to the base layer and just kept going, but I prefer to come back and stick a new layer in case I start messing around, decide I don't like it. I can just wipe the layer and still have all the other things that I had. So that's what I accomplished with that second layer. And one more time, there's the before and the after. Just some creative fun uh, that you can have in Luminar. There's so much you can do, and I hope that uh, you found this useful. Maybe get some uh, workflow tips or ideas, or maybe you're just going to go try something kind of fun and crazy with your own photos. Have at it. It's awesome. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it very much. And if you haven't subscribed, like, shared, commented, all that, let me, uh, you know, please do that and let me know what you think about it. And thanks for watching. I appreciate it very much. See you next time, friends, and adios.